Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the disappearance of two teenage girls, Sherry Miller and Pam Jackson. Although this case has been solved, it went unsolved for nearly 45 years. This case truly breaks my heart because despite the efforts of the girls' families, friends, and the community, their whereabouts were not known and many of their family members and friends have passed away before finding out what really happened to them. Sherry Miller and Pam Jackson were both 17 years old from Vermilion. Sherry was known for being a smart girl with a good head on her shoulders, and she was living with her grandparents after her mother had remarried and moved away. Her grandmother had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and Sherry was looking after her and taking care of her grandfather as well by getting him up in the morning, making him breakfast, and taking care of the daily chores. She also worked at the Dakota Hospital after school, which is where she ultimately met Pam Jackson. Sherry was good at sewing as well and wanted to pursue a career in the fashion design industry, and she had planned to move to California after graduating high school with her cousin Pam Stewart to pursue her goals. On the night of May 29, 1971, Sherry invited Pam to go out with her. Pamela Stewart, Sherry's cousin, was also going to go with them out that night, but she had to cancel at last minute because she got called to babysit. So the two girls made a visit to the hospital to visit Sherry's grandmother before heading out, and they left around 9.30 p.m. They were driving Sherry's grandfather's 1960 Studebaker. They met with some boys from school after leaving the hospital, and at this point, the boys had invited them to a party at a nearby gravel pit. The plan was that the girls were going to follow the boys to the party, but at some point, the boys had made a wrong turn, and when they got back on track, there was no sign of the girls or their car, so they just went to the party. Around 4 a.m. the next morning, Pam Jackson's mother noticed that the kitchen light was still on, which was unusual as Pam would turn it off when she got home. Her mother then looked in her bedroom and discovered that she was not there, but she just assumed that the girls had car troubles and stayed in town with a friend. So a little later that morning, Pam's parents started calling around and realized that no one had seen the girls. That's when they notified the police, and the police originally believed that the girls had run away, but they soon realized that neither of the girls had clothes with them and neither of them had their paycheck they had received that day either. It was also hard to believe that Sherry would leave her sick grandmother as well and unfortunately her grandmother had passed away just six days after Sherry and Pam went missing. It was suggested that the nearby river be drained or divers be sent down but it was ultimately decided that the current was too strong and it would be dangerous, so the police decided against it. Pam's father spent days and nights walking up and down the gravel roads and across nearby fields looking for any signs of the girls, and he would spend hours at the police department looking at photos of unidentified deceased girls and frequently checked her social security number to see if it was being used by anyone. But unfortunately, he never found anything regarding either of the girls, and it was as if the girls literally vanished into thin air. In 2004, David Lycan was accused of murdering Sherry and Pam. At the time he was questioned, he was serving 225 years in prison for rape and kidnapping a Vermilion woman in 1990. He became a person of interest because he had a very dark history and was in the Vermilion area at the time the girls had disappeared. In fact, he lived close to the gravel pit where the party was supposed to take place, and based on his, his history of violence against women, the investigators deemed it necessary to investigate his involvement in the case further. During the initial investigation in 1971, a neighbor of the Jackson family overheard a party line phone conversation a month before the girls had disappeared. The conversation was allegedly between Pam and a man named David. It was believed that this man attended the University of South Dakota, but the neighbor was unsure. 
So the investigators began to question Lycan's victims in order to find out as much information about his crimes as possible. They even went on to speak with his younger sister, who claimed that Lycan was often violent and threatening. She also claimed that he told her to drive as he climbed in the back seat of the car and raped a female passenger. She told investigators that David knew Sherry and Pam through church and had even taken the same school bus at some point with Sherry as he was 16 when they went missing. According to his sister, she stated that shortly after the disappearance of the girls, her family began digging large pits on their farm and created a large fire, but it was stated that her parents often covered up David's crimes to keep him out of trouble. Despite this, though, Lycan had a lot of anger for his parents, but according to her, she was told his anger had something to do with the girl that was buried on the farm. When she was asked if she had seen an unusual car on the farm, she was shown several different models of Studebakers. She accurately identified the car Sherry was driving the night the girls had disappeared. When she was asked if she saw any bodies, she told the investigators that she saw Sherry slumped over the steering wheel and Pam with her head against the car window. But it seemed as if she was giving information that had been fed to her by the investigators. The investigators were able to use all of this information to obtain a search warrant for Lycan's possessions that were on the farm, as well as the farm itself. They dug up several areas over the course of four days based on a map that David's sister had provided them. Investigators did find bones in a septic tank, a red purse in the rafters of the house, a pair of rubber gloves, women's clothing, boxes of photos and letters. Several months later, they returned to find two hubcaps and some other car parts that had been buried on the farm. But ultimately, nothing was found pertaining to Sherry and Pam. In 2006, the investigative team received information from Aloysius Black Crow, who was an inmate that was incarcerated with Lycan, and he claimed that Lycan had confessed to him that he had murdered both of the girls. They put a wire on him and asked him to go talk to Lycan about his confession, and when he did, Lycan allegedly stated he had asked the girls for a ride, and once he was in the car, he raped Pam and tied Sherry up for hours. However, in 2008, it was discovered that the recorded confession was false and in fact it was another man's voice confessing to the crime while impersonating Lycan, therefore the charges against him were ultimately dropped. In September of 2013, nearly 45 years later, the case was finally solved. A fisherman at Brule Creek noticed wheels underneath the bridge due to the fact that the water levels were low and immediately contacted the police. During the investigation, they discovered the car was the 1960 Studebaker that Sherry was driving the night they had disappeared. Inside the car were two bodies that were later identified as Sherry and Pam through DNA testing and several personal items that were found in the car with them. And upon examination, it was discovered that there were no signs of injury, which indicated they did not die from foul play or homicide. Rather, they drove off the road into the murky river, which concealed their whereabouts. Although the area that the girl's car was found had been searched several times, the car was not able to be seen because the water was so murky and the water levels were so high at the time. And unfortunately, Pam's father passed away just five days before the girls and the car were discovered. He was 102 years old. This case was so devastating to me that I had to share it. I could never imagine losing a child, but to lose a child and never know what happened to them is truly indescribable. This was a case of an accident, but due to certain circumstances, the girls weren't found for so long. If the investigators did indeed drain the body of water, they would have discovered the car with the girls in it 
and the case would have been solved right then and there. And the families of Sherry and Pam would have the answers that they needed. But since they did not drain the body of water or send divers into the water, the families of Sherry and Pam ultimately died with no answers. It is also unsettling to think that Pam's father had walked up and down the road they were driving on that night, not knowing that he was walking past his daughter and her friend every single time. The fact that the investigation led to a man that could have been involved, I am sure that that made things far worse for the families, especially thinking that someone could have potentially kidnapped, raped, and killed their daughter. Just the thought alone that that could be a possibility is seriously horrifying. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And if you have any case suggestions, I'd love to hear about them. Also be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.